Did the Calvinist at DesiringGod.org really contradict the Westminster Confession of Faith on Assurance? Hi, I'm Bob Wilkin with Grace Evangelical Society, and I have some good news for you today. John Bloom, uh, a staff writer for DesiringGod.org, wrote a, an article on how God gives assurance. And I think you will find it very interesting, and I encourage you to go to the DesiringGod.org website and take a look at his article. I'd like to just go over a few of the points he made. Bloom opens up with a question, am I truly a Christian? And he finds this very troubling. Why? Well, evidently because in his view, no new or growing Christian can have assurance of his salvation. You have to be a very mature Christian to have some level or some decent level of assurance. He doesn't see certainty, as far as I can tell, as a possibility. But am I truly a Christian is a disturbing question for him and, by the way, for many Calvinists. He quotes Newton, the uh, author of the great hymn Amazing Grace, as saying, quote, we cannot be safely trusted with assurance. Presumably this is because Newton and many Calvinists believe that believers need to be warned that they will go to the lake of fire if they fall away, if they fail to persevere. And so certainty of one's salvation would not be a good thing, but it would lead people astray. So presumably the reason that Newton says we cannot be safely trusted with assurance is we couldn't handle it. We'd end up and fall apart. Now I'd like to look at two ways in which Bloom contradicts the Westminster Confession of Faith and I want to commend him for his independent thinking. He says, quote, assurance does not come in some subjectively measured inner witness. Unquote. He's talking about the way some Calvinists understand Romans 8, 16. I have some articles at faithalone.org if you'd like to read more about what I think is a proper understanding of Romans 8, 16. But Bloom is saying we don't look to our feelings, we don't look to some inner witness. And I want to commend uh, Bloom for this. Secondly, he makes this amazing statement, assurance does not come in how warm our affections for God are. That's also a great statement. There are many people in the cults who have warm affections for God, many people who believe in work salvation that have warm affections for God. Many people in other religions have warm affections for God. And so I commend Bloom for this point. However, his conclusion falls a bit short of what we would expect. Here's what he says in his conclusion. Our assurance comes from a growing confidence in Christ's saving work that purchased the fulfillment of all the great promises to us, 2 Peter 1, 4, and his power to keep them. Greater assurance comes from stronger faith, and faith only grows through the vigorous exercise of testing. I find this problematic because 2 Peter 1.4 doesn't talk about assurance of everlasting life. It's not talking about the promise of everlasting life or eternal security. And he doesn't talk here about being certain, but he talks about growing in confidence. I would suggest that the Bible's answer to how God gives assurance is that the moment we believe the promise of John 3.16, we know we have everlasting life because whosoever surely meaneth me. This also means that if I've never been sure, I've not yet believed the saving promise. It's really impossible to grow in assurance if assurance is certainty, and that's, of course, what it is. And we remain sure as long as we continue to believe the promise of everlasting life. The best source of assurance, that is the best 
verses in the Bible to find assurance are found in the Gospel of John because the Gospel of John is designed to lead people to believe in Christ for everlasting life. So if you have doubts about your salvation, I urge you to pray about it and read the Gospel of John, asking God to show you, is it really as simple as believing in Jesus Christ? And if we do, he guarantees us that we'll never perish, but we have everlasting life. Keep in mind, assurance can be lost, but everlasting life can't be lost. If you like what you heard today, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And remember, keep grace in focus.